that we now call home. The second calls us into relationship with ourselves and one another that we learn to grow in wisdom and compassion and share it generously. And the third calls us into relationship with our children's children out to the seventh generation, helping us to realize that what we do now will be felt by those who come after us. For those of you who don't know him, our guest speaker today is Alec Jensen. He grew up in this congregation, and he actually became the fourth person from Mission Peak who went to seminary and became a UU minister. I was the second. <laughs> we co-ordained him along with his internship ministry church last year, and we're so proud of him. I'm thrilled to be his worship associate this morning. I knew this opportunity would come sometime, and I'm really glad that it's here today. Alex will be talking to us about the theme of his master's thesis at Harvard Divinity School, how in the midst of creation, we can see glimpses of the beloved community that we are striving to create. Come, let us worship together. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Mission Peak Unitarian Universalist Congregation. My name is Deanna Ulm, and I'm the president of the board. And we're so glad you've joined us this morning. Unitarian Universalism is a radically inclusive, non-doctrinal, non-dogmatic, open-minded, and open-hearted faith. We are people who are all coming at truth from different paths. We gather together across different identities, experiences, and beliefs to affirm and promote the inherent worth of every person. Together, we see our job as to love the hate out of the world, heal the hurt in ourselves and one another, and to be the change we'd like to see. We use chat in our, or our, excuse me, we use chat in Zoom or our Joys and Concerns book, which is over by the welcome table, uh, to share joys and concerns, personal milestones of importance, which will be read aloud in the service. Maybe you're here for the first time. We've been reaching out and asking people to bring their friends because we think the world, especially now, needs some friendly places to gather and find encouragement and hope. We have social time after the service where we visit with each other in breakout rooms, in Zoom, or on the patio if you are here in 3D. The worship host will give you more information about the breakout rooms immediately after the service. In the meantime, we'll put a link to our weekly newsletter in the chat so you can see all the events coming up. We encourage you to join anything that speaks to you. We also put up our welcome email, welcome at mpuuc.org, and you can use that to request a newsletter or any other information that you need. There's a few things we'd like to call your attention to. In-person attendees should be masked inside and outside of Cole Hall during the service. We encourage those in contact with children or unvaccinated or immunocompromised adults to attend services outside or via Zoom. We allow worship leaders, associates, and other service participants to be unmasked while speaking, obviously. Uh, more information is on the bulletin board over to this side and also in Week on the Peak. Uh, please do remember to silence your electronic devices. Uh, if you are the head of a committee and have not yet RSVP'd for the April 9th Program Council, please do so by the end of today. I will also send out a reminder email when I get home to give you something to reply to. If you hear or see something in this morning service that inspires you or makes you laugh or brings you hope, please tweet it, share it on social media, or just tell a friend. We are trying to start a wave of love and justice with every gathering. Thanks again for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> again. 
My name is Melissa Holmes, and I'm the treasurer for the congregation. So when you see me, you know you're probably going to hear something about money. Um, so today I wanted to talk to you about Canvas. If you haven't heard, it's Canvas season when we all make our pledge to say what our financial contribution to Mission Peak will be for the next fiscal year, which is July 2022 through June 2023. It's very important to do this for the health of our congregation. Without your pledges, we cannot budget for our expenses in the coming year. If you plan to make a donation to Mission Peak next year, it's very important that you take the next step and submit your pledge so we know how much you will be donating. We need that information so we can formulate a responsible budget based on our uh, expected income. If you haven't attended a Canvas pledge party, there's one left this coming Tuesday. Please look in the Week on the Peak today for information about how to sign up for that because they do need 48 hours notice to plan for who will be attending. If you have attended a pledge party, but you have not submitted your pledge, please take some time today to fill out your pledge card. If you need the link to the pledge form, which we're doing online, it's on the website on our Canvas webpage. If you've already made a pledge, thank you so much. Your pledge provides the vast majority of our congregation's income. I wanted to share a little bit with you about how we are doing on our pledges. So far, we have seen amazing generosity from this Mission Peak community. We have currently received 35 pledges for a total of over $185,000, which is fantastic. <laughs> of those 35 pledges, 29 households maintained or increased their pledges to qualify for our very generous matching grant. The pledge increases were included increases of 50%, 75%, 100%, and in one case, an increase of 150%. Thank you so, so much for all of your generosity. Our matching grant was for $20,000, which again was amazing, and we have received enough pledges to qualify, that qualify for matching funds to ensure that we will receive the entire $20,000 in matching funds. Thank you so much. A very big thank you to our Mission Peak members who provided the matching funds. If you're like me and you have not submitted your pledge yet, and I'll be attending the pledge party on Tuesday, so I might see you there. Um, I encourage you to think about what Mission Peak does to help you live out your values. That really hit home for me uh, last week during last Sunday's service, which was about systemic racism in this country when it comes to wealth building and the ability for a family to purchase their own home. Reverend Greg's sermon talked about the local, state, and federal laws that were put in place to keep African Americans from being able to get a mortgage and the efforts that were made to reduce the value of their property if they were able to buy a house. Last year, the Arrow Committee here at Mission Peak requested that $2,000 be included in this year's current budget for Indigenous and African American reparations, which we did put in the budget. Mission Peak gave $1,000 to the Community Housing Development Corporation of Virginia which is a group providing home ownership and wealth building assistance for African Americans in the Bay Area. During the service last Sunday, Reverend Barbara Myers read a letter from a recipient of the money we donated, who thanked us for providing the opportunity for their family to buy a house and to start the wealth building process uh, that had been denied to them in the past. I was so grateful and proud that Mission Peak was able to turn our values into action and make a difference in the fight against systemic racism in this country. All of our pledges made that donation possible. So thank you. I'd also like to share some of the comments that we got on a few of our completed pledge forms. If you haven't filled out your pledge yet, there is a space where you can make a little comment. These are some of the ones that we've gotten. So one person wrote, 
This is a 6% increase for me, even though my income has gone down lately. I want to support Mission Peak as much as I can. Another one, I wish, I could, I wish my pledge could be more. Huge gratitude for everyone who supports our community. I love us. And another, so proud to be part of MPUUC and happy to be able to increase my pledge over 50% this year. Knowing that it will be matched is a true blessing and a wonderful gift. Reverend Gregg's message of $5 is $5 made this the simplest pledge decision for me since becoming a member, realizing that belonging is so much more valuable than money. I want to support and promote this congregation's shared values and to keep Greg employed by us. I think those comments say better than I ever could why pledging is so important to Mission Peak. So last, I want to say a very big thank you to Valerie Stewart and the whole Canvas team as well. <laughs> and to the party hosts and facilitators. Canvas is a big job in a very short amount of time, and they have done great work organizing and implementing all of the different Canvas events and information. You guys have all done an outstanding job. Thank you. So lastly, Thank you to everyone in the congregation for everything you do for Mission Peak. And if you haven't made your pledge, please do that as soon as you can. Yeah. 
please join with me in reciting these words that call us together to be a community with Unitarian Universalists all across the globe. We light this chalice to remind ourselves to treat all people kindly because we are all one family. Take good care of the earth because it is our home. Live lives full of goodness and love because that is how we will become the best people we can be. Read A Crayon Story by Michael Hall. He was red, but he wasn't very good at it. Oh dear, said his mother. His teacher thought he needed more practice. I'll draw a red strawberry, then you draw a red strawberry. You can do this, really, said Scarlet. But he couldn't really. Like this, said Red. Oh my, let's try again, said Scarlet. His mother thought he needed to mix with other colors. Why don't you two go out and draw a nice round orange, said his mom. A really big one, said Yellow. A really orange one, said Red. But they made a big greenish one. His grandparents thought he wasn't warm enough. Your class is making self-portraits for parents' night. Wear this warm red scarf. It's so you, said his grandparents. But it so wasn't. Oh, dear me, said his grandparents. Everyone seemed to have something to say. Sometimes I wonder if he's really red at all, said Amber. Don't be silly, it says red on his label, said Hazelnut. He came that way from the factory, said Coco Bean. Frankly, I don't think he's very bright, said Fuchsia. Well, I think he's lazy, said Grape. Right, he's got to press harder, said Army Green. Really apply himself, said Steel Gray. Give him time, he'll catch on, said Sunshine. Of course he will, said Sea Green. But he didn't catch on. Green frog, black sheep, brown cow, red, ah. All the art supplies wanted to help. The masking tape thought he was broken inside. The scissors thought his label might be too tight. I thought he wasn't sharp enough. But even with all our help, and all his hard work, he just couldn't get the hang of it. One day, he met a new friend. Will you make a blue ocean for my boat, said Barry. I can't, I'm red, said Red. Will you try, said Barry. So he did. Thank you, it's perfect, said Barry. You're welcome. It was easy, said Red. And he didn't stop there. Bluebells, blue jeans, blue bird, blueberries, blue well. I'm blue, said Red. He was blue and everyone was talking. My son is brilliant, said his mother. Who could have known he was blue, said Amber. I always said he was blue said Hazelnut. It was obvious, said Coco Bean. His blue ocean really lifted me, said Barry. All of his work makes me happy, said Sea Green. His blue strawberries are my favorite, said Brown. He's so intense, said Apple Green. I'm going to make a green lizard with him. A really big one, said Yellow. I hear he's working on a huge new project, said Gray. 
He's really reaching for the sky, said Scarlet. And he really was. What a great story. <laughs> we come together every Sunday and throughout the week for more than ourselves. We come to support one another and the ministries that infuse worth and dignity to our children and our youth and the programs of learning and leadership and our ministries in the larger world, including our efforts towards anti-racism and anti-oppression. Please make a contribution towards these worthy causes by mailing your check to Mission Peak UU Congregation to the address on the screen. You can also use the bill pay option in your online banking or drop your check in the Mission Peak mail slot. Or you can pay online with a credit or debit card. Thank you for supporting and sustaining the efforts of our members and friends and staff. Your contributions make learning, leadership, and loving each other more possible. One of the things that allows us to find hope and meaning, especially in hard times, is the love and support that we show one another. If you have a joy or concern that by sharing it with this caring community might bring the encouragement that you, resilience that you need, please write it in the briefly now in the chat. If you're here in person and you'd like to place a stone in the stone garden for a joy or concern, you may do that while the music plays. If your need is personal, you can send an email to our minister for a follow-up conversation. So as the music plays, I invite you to lay a stone in the stone garden. If you will 
So I'll read the joys and concerns that were written in the book first. There's so finally, one last stone for the hopes and hurts still too tender to escape our heart. May for the sake of love, keep our doors, our minds, and our arms open. Good morning, all of you. It's good to be with you virtually, uh, all the way here from uh, snowy Michigan. <laughs> I think this is one of the really cool things about worship in uh, this day and age, um, and what a gift it is to be back with you and uh, to be um, now as a minister fully uh, leading worship with you all. So, so thank you for having me. Um, and um, to introduce our reading this morning, uh, our reading uh, are words from the Reverend Jennifer Nordstrom from the book Justice on Earth, people of faith working at the intersections of race, class, and the environment. Um, in this excerpt, Nordstrom describes a vision of beloved community at the core of her Unitarian Universalist faith um, that she shares with us in her writing. I hold a vision of beloved community beyond the horizon of my own knowing. In this community of human and non-human beings, we live in integrity with each other and the earth. We work together to nourish and sustain life. We eat well, but do not take more than we need from each other or the earth. We have diverse, flourishing cultures that cooperate with, respect, and learn from one another without prejudice or hierarchy. We live free from violence or, or, or coercion. We celebrate every day and appreciate the joys of living. We dance and sing, we laugh, we use our minds to the benefit of life, not death. We create art and music, we tell stories, we live in tune with the rhythms of the earth, the seasons, day and night. We live in tune with each other. We live in tune with the rhythms of our own hearts. We'll now hear our anthem this morning, though I may speak with bravest fire.
Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. I first heard this song standing in a circle at one of Harvard Divinity School's weekly choir rehearsals. Standing side by side with my peers of all sorts of backgrounds, musical abilities, beliefs, and faith traditions, the lyrics became embodied in this incredible circle of voices, each one of us joining in the song. This holy moment of music making gave us a glimpse at something far greater than just ourselves. With no single one of us standing alone, Many of us were moved to tears by the gentle words and music. And to this day, it remains one of my favorite moments in my time in divinity school, reflecting radical types of communities and spaces, spaces where I have felt that I was welcomed to bring my full self and that I truly belonged. It also makes me realize just how much I've missed things like singing together in church and the sacred moments that we can create when we are together. More importantly though, moments like these point to something special that I know to be true of Unitarian Universalism and the kinds of spaces and communities that we hope to create. Now I suspect that I'm not alone in having glimpses like this one at something sacred and larger than myself. You too know moments like this. Moments like singing together in a packed sanctuary on a Sunday, singing with a swell and a hum that reaches us at our core. Moments like standing in awe under a clear night sky, gazing up at the wide moon and the great expanse of stars overhead. Moments like holding the hand of a loved one who is dying, bearing witness to their sacred and special life as it enters into its final moments. Sometimes we can even feel this in common everyday moments, like in slowing down to enjoy conversation with friends over a shared meal or a simple cup of coffee. I believe these glimpse moments go beyond just glimpses at wonder and connection. Instead, these glimpses offer us a peek at what we hold so dear and sacred as Unitarian Universalists. These are glimpses at the very power of life itself. And while we see a world out there that is so deeply hurting, there are still glimpses we have now at the beloved community that we so desperately dream to create. In exploring this theme of beloved community, I wanna to speak to you today about these sacred glimpse moments that we have across our lives. Needless to say, many of you have heard a lot about beloved community already. The concept of beloved community is something that I hold central to my ministry and calling. And it's also the subject of my master's thesis that I wrote just under a year ago to finish up divinity school. What I find so hard about language of beloved community is how it can be difficult to envision or even imagine. It might seem like this really abstract idea or something that is far beyond the reaches of our own imaginations. Some of us might look skeptically at beloved community as something that doesn't seem really practical or even achievable in our lifetime. Some of us might be wondering if the ark really does bend toward justice. Even so, I believe that the beloved community isn't really this far off concept that's too difficult for us to understand or even witness. Instead, I believe these everyday sacred glimpses show us that Beloved community is actually real to us and present with us in the here and now. Ultimately, this is at the heart of Unitarian Universalism and what I propose is our theology, how it is we make meaning or what it is that we hold sacred in common together. We believe beloved community is more than just a goal of how life should and ought to be. It's an experience that we have available to us even now. 
These glimpses at Beloved Community help to sustain us as we work faithfully and tirelessly against injustice and strive to make this world a better place. However, even in the wake of this powerful prophetic vision, we as a tradition are facing many growing pains. We're still trying to sort out what it is that we believe about ourselves as a faith and who we are still yet becoming. Though many of us within Unitarian Universalism have heard of this idea of beloved community, we're not yet all on the same page. We're trying to make sense of our history while also answering the calls to end white supremacy and racial injustice, both in ourselves and also in our institutions. This has become clear in a report from the UUA's Commission on Institutional Change, a committee that examines the structures of power and whiteness in Unitarian Universalism. In their latest report titled Widening the Circle of Concern, the commission named the importance of in these times of centering theology in our tradition. In their words, we need to articulate a theology grounded in our Unitarian Universalist principles and sources of inspiration. Developing a shared theology that centers on helping to unearth, manifest, and point the way toward liberation is for our collective flourishing. This theology will also call us to be accountable to the legacies of our past deeds and to work for an equitable future. In short, we have a deep need for a common faith and a better way of speaking about that shared faith. In speaking about beloved community this morning, I wanna offer this theology of glimpsing the sacred as a theology that could potentially answer this call. I believe that beloved community is a thread that unites each of us across this beautiful faith, no matter how many different personal beliefs and spiritualities we might have or different ways that we name the divine or the sacred. We are at a pivotal moment in our movement where we are deciding who we want to become and how we are leading this faith into the future for years to come. We need a better way of saying what it is exactly that we believe. Beloved community as both the world we are building and an experience we already know through these glimpses is one way we might name the core theology of our faith. Our reading from earlier, A Vision of Beloved Community by the Reverend Jennifer Nordstrom in the book, Justice on Earth, gives us a beautiful vision for what beloved community looks like. In her description of this community, she imagines a world in which we live in integrity with the earth. She names that we don't take more than we need and that we live in tune with nature's seasons and cycles. Likewise, we live in integrity with one another where we have diverse and vibrant cultures that teach us about what it is to be human without prejudice or hierarchy. Free from violence or exploitation, we live in tune with the rhythms of our own hearts as we laugh and sing together, celebrating the sacred joys of living. What I find so moving about this powerful vision is that it speaks to what we do in Unitarian Universalist communities together, especially here at Mission Peak. We covenant together to be spaces where we can bring our fullest selves, leaving no part of who we are behind or at the door. We strive to live in right relationship with one another and the world around us, and we join our hearts together on life's journey to celebrate life in all of its trials and tribulations, as well as its joys and sorrows. We know what beloved community is because we first experienced what it means to belong. This is what is so special about belonging to a Unitarian Universalist community like this one. However, we also know that our communities themselves aren't perfect. In contrast to this greater vision, we see just how far we have to go in order to fully get there. We recognize the many ways that white supremacy continues to pervade our communities and groups, and we long for multicultural communities that reflect this shared theology that we hold so dear. Communities that are fully welcoming to Black, Indigenous people, and people of color. 
We hope as well for a greater acceptance and embrace of queer and trans people in our congregations as we ensure that no single person feels alone or left out. An embrace that I was lucky enough to receive in this congregation as a young teenager and young adult who was deeply wrestling with my identity and sexuality. We are growing to be better and our faith teaches us that such vibrant dynamic communities are in fact possible. And when we do this right in our communities, we make opportunities for holy encounters, for people to feel loved and accepted just as they are in all that they are. And what we also know is that doing this right in our communities takes a lot of intentionality and practice. However, beloved community isn't some new idea that's emerged in recent years. This is a vision that also comes from our universalist roots as a faith. Our universalist forebears believed in a greater love that was holding every single one of us. In their view, no person was outside of the bounds of this love. While historically they might call this greater love God, our universalist ancestors pointed to that very thing that the abolitionist Frederick Douglass, as a humanist, named as glimpses of what he might call God. Though he wasn't a universalist, his description points to what many of us know to be true about the role of community in our lives. For Douglas, his gratitude and love to God was reflected in his gratitude to faithful people who, in his words, have devoted the great energies of their souls to the welfare of humanity. It is only through such people that I can get any glimpses of God anywhere. For our universalist ancestors, ultimately what mattered wasn't some sense of salvation in the afterlife, though universal salvation was a defining theology. Instead, they believed that salvation mattered in this life. They held a faith that taught that though this world might be marked with pain, tragedy, and injustice, there is ultimately good news. In the end, this world is still savable, and it is worthy of saving. Universalism tells us of a circle of love that embraces every single one of us, no matter who we are or where we are on life's journey. This widening circle also shows us just how much working toward justice and liberation in this life matters, especially as we work to care for those who are most at the margins. Our faith calls us to widen our welcome, to build a longer table, inviting those who are different from ourselves to pull up a chair. Returning again to the commission's report, they write, a universalist theology of liberation in the present day centers our capacity to be sanctuaries of radical truth-telling and abundant compassion, so that the all-embracing love at the center of our tradition can serve to make all of us more whole. If we are serious about widening our welcome to others, and I believe that we are, we need to have a better way of sharing this faith's good news of love and liberation. Imagine what might be possible for this faith if we truly choose to center this potent theology of both radical welcome and inclusion. In our Time for All Ages story this morning that Sean read for us, we see the power in making beloved spaces where we're welcome to be our fullest selves. For the blue crayon that was told his whole life that he was red, he made a friend who saw him as he was. The blue crayon's entire community then rallied to support him to be his bluest self, to draw the bluest oceans, blueberries, and whales. And in the end, the blue crayon learned what it meant to belong. The Blue Crayon experienced a glimpse of living in beloved community and right relationship with a community of care and support to hold him. Returning as well to that opening moment that I shared with you of singing in a circle of beloved friends, getting a glimpse at the beloved community to come through this sacred moment. There is so much power in these moments and spaces for connection that we can experience in our lives. For myself, I was lucky. Walking through your doors and becoming a Unitarian Universalist in my teenage years quite literally saved my life. 
this faith would hold me in some of the most challenging moments of my life experience, affirming my own worth and dignity through my coming out as gay in my teen and young adult years. I was lucky that I experienced a Unitarian Universalism that held me in all that I was, and that I had a congregation that was also undoubtedly there for me. I was lucky that this powerful experience of beloved community would eventually call me to bring this to others in ministry. It breaks my heart that there are still folks out there who aren't welcome to experience our life-saving faith and theology. There are still some who don't feel that they belong, who are left wondering if we'll really make a space at the table for them to bring their fullest selves. Friends, our faith calls us to draw and extend this circle wider. And I invite you to join me in cultivating this shared faith. Our good news can't afford to be locked up in empty words of welcome. Instead, we must do the work of widening the circle. We have a life-saving faith and theology that needs to be shared out now more than ever in our world. As Starhawk tells us, we are all longing to go home to some place we have never been, a place half remembered, and half envisioned, we can only catch glimpses of from time to time. Community. Somewhere, a circle of hands will open to receive us. Eyes will light up as we enter. Voices will celebrate with us whenever we come into our own power. Community means strength that joins our strength to do the work that needs to be done. A circle of healing, a circle of friends, Somewhere we can be free. So this morning, I leave you with this blessing. May we draw our circles wider still. May we be ready to pursue this great promise of the beloved community on the horizon. And when we are weary in the face of anguish, pain, and injustice, may these glimpse moments that we get at the world yet to come sustain us on the journey. Let this be our song that no one stands alone, that each one of us belongs and is held in a greater love. I love you all over there at Mission Peak. It is so good to be with you this morning. May it be so, and amen. And we'll go now singing our closing hymn, Come and Go With Me, performed by the Peak Performers.
Please join with me in reciting the words for extinguishing the chalice that will soon appear on the screen. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. My uh, benediction for you all is actually the benediction that I share um, each Sunday at my congregation way up north here in uh, Traverse City, Michigan. Um, and so I think it's a fitting one considering our, uh, our theme today that I shared, but um, I thought I would bring that piece uh, to you all as well. So in the spirit of covenant, community, and commitment, in the spirit of these sacred glimpses of the beloved community to come that both nourish and sustain us, May we be made ready to serve one another and to build the world that we so desperately dream of. Go in peace, all of you. So good to see you this morning. May it be so, and amen.